thought about primary sources in your neighborhood rather than just in your classroom. Today we're actually walking a block. If you take a look behind us, you'll see that this is one of the most historic blocks of the Lower East Side. And we start today at the Tenement Museum. You can see right here, because we've got a teacher and a librarian in the house, you can see the tenements here with all kinds of picture books. This starts our story. And if you take a look at the timeline, the primary sources are right here on the window that share the stories of the people that lived above us and behind us. So walk with us really quickly. You walk down and take a look at your neighborhood. It's really interesting if you look up you look up ahead, you can see the different designs of the buildings. You can see the places that played a role in the neighborhood, like Joe's Fabric Warehouse, because many of the people who lived in the tenements worked with specific fabrics, and we can find primary sources in the Library of Congress that tell that story. How about the hotel here who, that housed immigrants when they first came? Come with me down to work. Something I noticed that I've yes. noticed going with Michelle too, is you notice the architecture, like this is the first time I learned about uh, the dead teen dog. So what's going on in the tram? And what is the story that that tells of uh, the neighborhood? And what about the people? Just look over, um, who's walking up and down the street? So as we tell the stories historically, how do we also tell the stories today? So walk this way, and if you come down this direction, you can look straight up and see that above us, we also have a Chinese design factor on the roof, which means that there are multiple cultures in this neighborhood and are reflected in the designs of the buildings. Again, there's also hidden details in the primary sources. So if you go this way, come back to 97 Orchard Street, which is one of the very first places that tells the story of our historic people that lived in this neighborhood. At 97 Orchard Street, gives a story of multiple generations who lived at the Tenement Museum. Why don't you drop into the Library of Congress and look up New York and look up immigration and take a look at the people who lived in this neighborhood. Today, you can also find primary sources with the New York Historical Society. You can find them on Gilder Lehrman and you can also find them in your State Historic Preservation Office. Don't limit yourself to one place, but then as a librarian, you also have to think about other ways to connect to place and primary sources. How's you that? You know, this was one of the places where the immigrants came. We often think of them stopping at Ellis Island, but then where did they go, right? Yeah. And they can come in to the Tenement Museum and tell the rest of that story. So next time, why don't you think about, instead of just bringing a picture to the classroom, have a student walk their block tell the story of what their neighborhood looks like and tell here. the story of what it means to be behind a door or a window. Tell this direction. That's what I want you to show. Notice the, uh, the wrought iron work and what's behind the doors. I love that. That's a great activity to do with kids. Go to your neighborhood. Look at all the doors. Tell the story of just your neighborhood. But tell the story of this neighborhood. So here's some wrought iron design and then right next to it we get an even different perspective, right? And then you have a front of a building that's not wrought iron at all, that it's actually wood because they didn't afford this kind of design. They had to do it in wood. So you have a mixed piece here that tells a story about who lived here, what they could afford, but what was important to them on a storefront. So walk your block. We'll talk to you later. Thank you.